Hi, my name is Satoshi Sanada, and I'm a teacher at Footscray City College in Melbourne, Australia. I have been a teacher of Big History Project for about two years now, and today I want to tell you about how I approached the course initially and、uh, what I did to tailor the course to suit the、uh, school's priorities. Prior to teaching Big History Project, I was teaching、um, philosophy and Japanese at senior levels. So, my background is mainly in social science and languages. And、uh, because I finished most of my schooling in Japan, I didn't have a lot of knowledge about what was being taught in Australian science and history curriculum. What I found really great about Big History Project is that、uh, because the content is so vast, It can have all sorts of different entry points for teachers. You know, it doesn't matter what your backgrounds are. For example, you know, my background is social science and languages, and, but you know, the, there's so much、uh, reading material and videos in the course that we can watch and we can learn quite a lot of things. And of course, it's really important for us to learn some basic you know, scientific concepts like、um, I don't know, the Newton's law of you know, gravitation or、uh, you know, formation of chemical elements and things like that. But, Um, and the science teachers may get a bit angry, but you know, we just need to know those as, you know, so far as we can teach students about how these ideas have been、uh, formed and how they have been challenged and interrogated and you know, over the course of history how they have、uh, evolved. And that's the main thing about、uh, Big History Project. The、um, investigation tasks in early units are great for this.、Um, For example, the Unit 4 investigation task looks at、uh, the various historical documents、um, around Wegener's hypothesis of continental drift、uh, in order for students to understand why you know, some theories become rejected initially and how they may become accepted later、uh, down the track. And、uh, Investigation 5, on the other hand, looks at、uh, Darwin's theory of evolution. And comparing these two tasks,、uh, we can create a very interesting discussion around. You know, why some theories are challenged more and why some theories may be accepted、um, more readily. And、uh, you know, these are some of the ways that teachers like myself can teach.、Um, you know, by using the scientific ideas, we can teach students how the、uh, society and culture may play a role in creation of knowledge. So, the school I work at、um, is experiencing quite a large demographic change.、Um, a lot of students are showing interest in areas like、uh, history, politics, and philosophy. And、uh, there, was, you know, there was really a need to equip students with necessary skills to succeed well in those areas. So, things like you know, document analysis,、um, reasoning, and argumentation. And that's why I've designed a version of Big History Project. Uh, to be offered to year 10 students starting in 2015.、Um, I have、uh, decided to split the course into four parts.、Um, the course is organized in this manner、uh, to specifically cater for students who might be interested in studying history, politics, and philosophy at the senior level. The part one draws a lot on earlier units of Big History Project、um, to learn about a range of origin stories, including the Big Bang Theory. And see what role religions have played at various historical moments and for development of、um, you know, different ideas and thoughts. The part two is about emergence of cities and states. It's a great、uh, way to look at how social hierarchy and inequality started to develop in the world. The part three focuses on political and industrial revolutions during the 18th and 19th century and their impacts on today's world. Finally, the part four is about the implication of our current practices for the future and the next threshold of increased complexity, or、well, if there is to be one.、Uh, throughout the course, students will be introduced to works by a range of great writers from various historical periods, including Plato, Aristotle, Hobbes, Locke, Nietzsche,、uh, Popper, and Kuhn. Yeah, so, I hope this video gave you some ideas as to how to approach the course and how to you know, choose what to include and what to leave out.、Um, you know, if you're thinking about teaching a course in a similar manner or if you, you know, just want to share some ideas,、um, I would love to hear from you. 
um, you know, it'll be really good to have an opportunity to collaborate uh, in teaching and planning, um, you know, wherever in the world you are. Thank you very much.